My name is Tom Theobald. I own the Nylot Honey Farm and I've been a beekeeper for 35 years and this will be year number 36. I've been concerned about my own bees and the uh, effects that I was seeing in the brood, the young bees, and began investigating and uncovered a series of memos which documented the handling of a neonicotinoid pesticide called clothianidin. Clothianidin is unique because it's a very, very pervasive chemical. It's water soluble, which means that it's systemic to the plants. It gets into the vascular system and is carried to all parts of the plant. It gets into the groundwater and is mobile in the groundwater. It can accumulate in the soil and groundwater with successive plantings of treated crops, which is customary in the corn belt. And it affects insects central nervous system in ways that are cumulative and irreversible, which means that it can have a profound effect when minute amounts are encountered over time. In 2003, clothianidin was given a conditional approval, the condition being the successful completion of the life cycle study. The life cycle study was intended to measure the effect of this pesticide on the bees over a long period of time, several months. In the original memorandum, they outlined very clearly what their concerns about were about the hazards to the honeybee, concerned about the viability of the queen and brood, and the long-term consequences and the dangers of this product. The life cycle study was supposed to have been completed during the first growing season, 2003, and delivered to the EPA by December of 2004. This life cycle study was not completed until August of 2006 and was not reviewed by the EPA for another 15 months despite the, the questions surrounding it and the, and the concerns. And, and I looked at the study and it really was not scientifically sound. Anyone could see that. And Jim Frazier, the scientist at Penn State, said just that when he first saw it. He, he thought that it was unsound. And so I wrote an article in the July issue of Bee Culture. I got a call in November from an EPA employee informing me that Bayer had requested registration on two additional seed crops, mustard and cotton, and in part because of my article, they had gone back and reviewed the initial study and determined that it was not scientifically sound. And I asked if it had been documented. They said yes, and I asked for a copy, and it was sent to me. And that is what has become the famous leaked document. It was the condition under which Conditional registration was granted and the successful completion of which cleared the way for full registration. So now we have a product that has not satisfied the requirements for registration and the EPA proposes that sales will simply continue. It appears that they they feel they can just pick and choose from the regulations and and honor only those ones that don't inconvenience industry. If the EPA just chooses to select those regulations that they want and ignore the others, there is no regulation. The primary charter of the EPA is the prevention of unreasonable risk for man and the environment, and they have not done so. The environment has become the experiment, and we've all become the experimental subjects. This product was on the market for eight growing seasons with a conditional registration, the condition being the study which was ultimately rejected by the EPA scientists. Now, the question is, on what basis is this product going to continue to be sold? We're concerned about this specific pesticide called the anodone, but we're much more concerned about the regulatory process that led to its use on the market for eight growing seasons under a cloud of serious concern. And there apparently are other pesticides and other chemicals 
which have been introduced to the market under the same conditions. We believe that we have to go back and evaluate just how the regulatory system is working or not working, or we'll just be facing some other poison a year from now. I'm asked frequently what people can do. At this point, I think the, the greatest contribution that people can make is to take the time and energy to understand the issues so that as we debate these questions in public, we have an informed public who can engage in those discussions. And there are three websites that they can go to. Beyond Pesticides, the Pesticide Action Network, or BoulderCountyBeekeepers.org, which is our local website. And we have most of the information on there. They can read and evaluate it for themselves. I think the important thing to remember here is that we can remove this product and we'll be dealing with another one a year from now unless we go back and, and change the conditions which led to what appears to be a very serious environmental problem that goes far beyond the bees.